Hola amigos, ¿cómo están? Un placer saludarlos. Hoy es un día histórico. Hoy día vamos a tener una persona muy especial que de hecho que al escucharlo vamos a, a ver cómo puede mejorar en muchas áreas de nuestra vida. Es un ser que realmente está inspirando a muchas personas, les está dando las herramientas para salir adelante. Ustedes saben que estamos viviendo en una etapa bastante diferente, ¿no? una etapa de la pandemia con incertidumbre y necesitamos herramientas para salir adelante, fortalecernos. Y bueno, el día de hoy vamos a tener la presencia de una persona muy especial, un ser que realmente está cambiando la vida de muchas personas. En el año 2010 tuvimos la oportunidad de, de conocerlo a través de un video que se llama El Circo de la Mariposa y esto nos ha acompañado hasta el día de hoy. Todos los seminarios o reuniones de entrenamiento han sido tan importantes que nos ha dado pues esa, esa visión de las cosas que debemos hacer. Ha ayudado a gente que no podía hablar en público, lo hacía, gente que tenía miedo a manejar, salía, gente que no te, tenía miedo hasta nadar, podían hacerlo. Y esa transformación es la que muchos de nosotros necesitamos. Ahí nos dimos cuenta que las limitaciones no son físicas, sino son mentales. Así que estamos muy contentos de esto. Y bueno, el día de hoy vamos a conocer a nuestro querido Nick Boyajic. Bienvenido, Nick. Nice to meet you. Nick, es un gusto saludarte. Estoy muy emocionado de que estemos eh, conectados ahora. Eh, te cuento un poco cómo fue que te conocimos. Estuvimos hace unos años, más o menos en el 2010, en un seminario donde un coach nos mostró un video y nos pidió que dentro del video nos podamos identificar con alguna persona que estaba dentro de esta, de esta película, ¿no? de este cortometraje. Y dentro de ver la película fue que eh, vimos el circo de la mariposa y fue realmente espectacular. Yo me identifiqué mucho con tu historia porque venía de varios golpes que me habían pasado desde pequeño y desde ese momento yo sentí un, un cambio tremendo. Y en mis seminarios porque nosotros nos dedicamos a lo que es emprendimiento, ayudamos a las personas a salir adelante. He proyectado ese video hasta el día de hoy y ha sido unos cambios tremendos que han tenido las personas, como por ejemplo, gente que tenía miedo a hablar en público, lo hacían, gente que tenía miedo a manejar, manejaban, y gente que tenía miedo, no sé, pues a, a comunicarse con otra persona, lo podían hacer porque entendimos pues que las limitaciones no son físicas, ¿no? sino son mentales. Entonces, viendo eso, un día dijimos, algún día tenemos que tener a, a Nick en nuestro seminario, que esa expresión de video se, había, se convierta en algo donde podamos estar juntos compartiendo este mensaje para más personas. Entonces, hemos elaborado unas preguntas, Nick, a las cuales me gustaría que nos ayudes a, a resolver. Y, y bueno, te agradezco enormemente este espacio. Sé que tienes un tiempo limitado. Y muchísimas gracias, en verdad, porque es un momento especial para nosotros. Entonces, vamos a, a empezar con gracias las preguntas. Gracias y gracias a Dios. Los amo, los amo. Dios te bendiga. Y gracias por tu amor para mí. And uh, un día a la vez, uh, muy esperanza. There's a lot of hope, a lot of inspiration from just what you've said. So thank you for encouraging me. Gracias, Nick. Gracias. Gracias, Nick. Gracias, Nick. Entonces, eh, dentro de las preguntas que tengo, eh, la primera es, yo sé que has pasado muchas experiencias cuando eras eh, un niño, ¿no? Pero nos gustaría en este momento... Eh, saber qué es lo primero que se te viene a la mente ¿no? de, de cuando eras niño. ¿Qué recuerdo tienes de, de esa etapa que sientas que a nosotros nos puede ayudar a seguir eh, fortaleciéndonos como personas? So, one of the things that I realized was that I had no arms and legs and I looked different, but I didn't think it was such a big deal until I actually went to school and I saw how people would react to me. Uh, my mom and dad always loved me, encouraged me, and let me know uh, that I'm their boy and that uh, God has a plan for me. And so they are uh, someone who were my heroes for my childhood. Um, but, you know, I had a lot of great memories as well. I uh, went fishing and caught my first fish at age six. 
had my first wheelchair at age six, was introduced to a computer at age six. So I was very privileged um, back in Australia at that time uh, to have those opportunities that many people even still today in some parts of the world still don't have that opportunity. Um, and I just remember that my parents were always busy, but when we were home, we'd have a lot of family time. Wow. Muchísimas gracias, este, Nick. Y cuando, cuando tú estabas en el colegio, nosotros como emprendedores, eh, pues nos lanzamos a hacer cosas muchas veces sin terminar ni siquiera una carrera universitaria o hasta incluso no, no han terminado las escuelas muchas personas. ¿no? Y nosotros sabemos que al inicio, cuando tú fuiste a estudiar, fue un reto para ti porque te habían puesto en colegios que incluso estaban avanzados, ¿no? ¿Cómo, cómo superaste esa, esa etapa en la Overcome época? Overcome about, uh, uh, you know, your bullying at school, uh, struggles there. Yeah, for me, uh, I definitely tried to tell a teacher and it wouldn't help. And then um, I would find myself isolating my own self from everyone else, uh, feeling like just because a couple people felt that way, maybe that's really how everyone felt. I told my mom and dad, I don't want to go to school because they're teasing me. They said, you have to go to school. Um, and so it was a, a daily struggle. I did have a couple of friends that uh, I realized now were always there for me. Um, and, you know, generally most people were kind, but it was those who negatively came across and persistently picked on me. Um, that led me to uh, ask bigger questions. Why me? Um, what plan and purpose and hope do I have in my life? Um, and what kind of job am I going to get? I'm not going to get married. Um, I've actually married a, a Mexican born and raised uh, in Mexico. Her name is Kane. Her father was Japanese. And um, it's been a, a, an incredible journey now seeing that we have four children together and traveling to um, 74 countries around the world and becoming the top motivational speaker in the world under age 40. Um, you know, you, you really um, um, are on it in seeing the fruit from your labor, but when you're in the storm, it's very difficult. And so that storm was cold, it was dark, it was lonely. Um, and I believe that each and every one of us have areas of life such as faith, family, friends, finance, and fitness, which are all very important to maintain and check in health. And so for me, I didn't have any faith at that point. My family, my friends were there. Money wasn't an issue and fitness wasn't an issue at, at age 10 years old. I looked at my life and I'm thinking, I don't have anything really to live for. There's no purpose. Um, and if I'm just going to be a burden to my parents, I'm not going to get a job, not going to get married, then why am I here? And so I even doubted that I'd get a tertiary education in university. And so I actually attempted suicide at age 10. Uh, I felt like I'm going to be facing bullying for the rest of my life. In fact, pre-COVID, um, I'd been able to do anonymous surveys in nearly 300 schools in America. And uh, we did a survey where we found 6 to 12% of all teenagers had thought of committing suicide. 3 to 6% uh, have actually attempted suicide. Um, 40% of the reason for attempted suicide was because of bullying and 40% because of a brokenness in their home. And um, because I was affected with uh, bullying and, and attempted suicide, I now have a passion to reach out through a curriculum, AIA curriculum, with a social emotional learning curriculum that helps students understand what their value is, to be self-aware that it's not about what people think of you or how you look, or whatever differences we have, but that we all have value and that we all need each other. We all need more love in this world. We need to love ourselves before we can ever believe that we can change the world in a humble way. And so for me, um, it was difficult. Um, but then at age 13, I started being thankful for what I had instead of being angry for what I did not have. And so uh, we're very, very thankful for that opportunity um, to have a, a, a family that loved me, 
because not many children have a loving home. Um, and that love enabled me to have a little bit of self-love to not give up. And my faith then started at age 15. And uh, never had I dreamt that I'd become a speaker. Um, it was the janitor at my high school who was cleaning the toilets who said for the first time, you're going to be a worldwide speaker. And I said, you're crazy. And I started speaking and got invited to many opportunities and walked through those opportunities. And uh, later on became an entrepreneur after doing some things as a late teenager, early 20s, young man. Wow. Este, Nick, y en la etapa en la que viviste del, del bullying, porque tú eres un defensor también de este tema de las palabras a veces que son muy duras para la gente, ¿no? el tema del bullying que te hicieron desde pequeño, pero también veo que tú eh, logras eh, a través de tu de tu forma de ser, de tu sonrisa y tu alegría, ¿no? Cambiar esa situación. Y esto pasa porque a nosotros como emprendedores nos dicen fracasados, nos dicen no les va a funcionar, dedíquense a otra cosa, etcétera, ¿no? muchas cosas. Pero hay una parte que he visto de ti en tus conferencias, en tus historias, donde cuentas que un día estabas en un auto y bajas el, la, el vidrio del, del, del carro y al, al costado tenías a una persona, a una, una chica que te miraba y que tú lo, se miraban los dos y luego tú giraste, ¿no? <ríe> giraste por completo y, o sea, hice un giro completo y fue muy gracioso, o sea, cómo lo contaste, pero esto, esto representa un poco a, a lo que es el, el sentimiento de cambiar ese ese dolor que se podría decir para las personas con algo que pueda representar alegría, ¿no? ¿Cómo, cómo nos puedes expresar ese, esa acción? Yeah, look, first of all, um, we all have discouraging people around us and, um, you know, uh, when you start something, Um, it's not about what people think of it. It's not even if they believe in you or not. It's you embracing what that goal is and that dream is and, and trying and understanding that failure is part of the journey. It, failure is part of the process. And so for me, um, you know, we all need to understand that short-term, mid-term, long-term goals are very important for us to have vision. Um, and when people get in the way, don't let people get in the way. Um, don't be prideful about it. Don't be egotistical about it. Keep humble. Um, but, you know, with your short-term, mid-term, long-term goals, write them down, especially with your short-term goals to build that confidence to help you be encouraged. Maybe write down those micro goals, maybe the next 10 things that you got to do towards your bigger goal in the next 30 days. And when you achieve that, cross it off because you realize the progress that you do have. Um, you know, there are times where you need to wait for those dreams to come true, where you actually have more time to invest in it. But if you have extra time, don't waste that time and go for it. If you're married, make sure that your spouse is on board uh, with you or else that's going to be detrimental to your marriage. Uh, I started all my companies um, that still exist today before I got married. And then um, now together with my wife, we make uh, decisions in sync. Um, and so it's very important to always have those priorities, um, you know, read books, go to seminars, get educated. Um, and for as long as your heart has that burning fire and the fire in the belly to keep on going, you keep on knocking on those doors. And every time you get a no, you're one no closer to a yes. Um, I remember when I thought, and I, you know, I'm going to be a speaker, I called 52 schools. And my own parents had no idea. What are you doing? I mean, in 2000 to 2002, the only motivational speakers that we knew of uh, were from America. Um, and so Australia was almost 10, 20 years behind America at that point. And uh, no one ever believed that I could ever make a living, um, you know, out of speaking. But I needed to follow my heart. And with my faith, that was number one. I felt like God communicated to me and 
revealed to me that's what he wants me to do and then if my family followed great um you know my brother my sister my mom and dad in particularly um my mom and dad said uh they wanted me to you know do a double degree in accounting and financial planning as a backup plan just in case you know like a plan b and so that's exactly what i did so i went into options trading stock trading as a teenager bought my first investment property at age 19 graduated with a double major at 21 and then went into full-time speaking which now has taken me to 74 countries around the world and so um you know trying to find that loving people who love you but all they do is bring you down uh, but then also as well you know in, in culture you know sometimes we we tease each other we bring people down it's not good any negative thing that comes out of your mouth is guess what negative it doesn't make the person stronger um well it's just culture my dad teased me so i'm gonna tease you no um you know you must stop all the negative channels that's happening uh to really reach your full potential and help you understand the influence and legacy that you can have of people around you as well because more than an entrepreneur you're a world changer and it's not about what you achieve as much as who you change along the way money drug sex alcohol pornography fame and fortune you put your happiness in temporary things your happiness will be temporary and so understanding that our great purpose is to make a legacy and world change to change a country by changing one person at a time wow muchísimas gracias nick eh, nick en, hemos pasado desde el año 2020 desde marzo una etapa compleja a nivel mundial con este tema de la pandemia no que al final ha uh, hecho que las personas tengan momentos dolorosos, un poco difíciles. Eh, y nosotros acá, acá, al menos en Perú, seguimos todavía con esa incertidumbre. Eh, ya tenemos familiares que han pasado estas etapas difíciles con, con la pandemia, ¿no? ¿Qué, ¿Qué consejos nos darías para, para superar esta, esta incertidumbre que venimos viviendo? You know, um, when your faith is solid in the truth, it doesn't mean that you don't go through depression or anxiety or loneliness sometimes. I know I experienced some things that I needed to go through some counseling through for myself. And so I'm the motivational speaker that talks about hope and believing that everything's okay um, and it's going to be okay, but it still doesn't mean that we don't suffer through those things. And so first thing that I tell everyone is make sure that you deal with your emotions, not just hide them or bottle them up or, or ignore them because they are going to catch up to you someday, sometime. Um, second is, um, know that this is not the uh, last crisis. Um, arguably though, this is the most unique crisis that may actually alter the entire world. Um, I, as a man of faith, believe in the Bible, and we know what the Bible says about what's happening with the world order and how we uh, need to be looking out for that, uh, where you will not be able to buy or sell without a chip. And then you see Amazon, you know, bringing a chip on board. Now, this book's been written for thousands of years, and obviously with the prophecy, we must understand that it's, it's more than just a book. You need to read the Bible yourself. And really, if you have faith, we know that then the faith in God, God that never changes, knows exactly what's going on. He's not surprised by anything, but he's for us. He's not against us. And so um, will I make some decisions for my family that may seem counter counterintuitive, counterculture? Um, I, don't, I don't trust a lot of people. Um, and I don't believe this is the end of it. Um, uh, I think that a lot of people are going to continue to suffer. I think there's a lot of corruption in the world, uh, in every country, uh, that has the influence of United Nations and the World Health Organization and many, many things that are happening that I don't agree with. Um, but what we must understand, um, is that you need to live out according to your own conviction and your faith, your family, your friends, your finance, your fitness, do everything you can to be healthy. So in your soul and spirit, for me, I pray every day. I listen to music every day that encourages me and my soul and my spirit. And I also check on other people. How are you doing? And when I wasn't doing good, I'd ask people to check in on me. Because I think we need each other more than anything. Uh, apart from God, we need each other. And so... Um, I think this is going to be different. 
Um, many people don't know this, but I've had death threats in my life. Um, I, I have made some moves uh, accordingly with our COVID crisis, financial crisis, um, and other things. Um, I know the flu is real, but it's just another flu. And so uh, it's been detrimental to so many people, unfortunately. And uh, governments are going to have to make decisions accordingly, according to whatever they think is best. There's a massive division in America. I think there's a 30% chance that America will become two countries. That's how I feel right now in this country. Um, and so I don't think we've seen the end of anything. I think we're only seeing the beginning of things. Um, and I'm literally making steps uh, accordingly. Uh, people are already asking me, will you take the vaccine? What if you don't take the vaccine, then you don't travel? Um, there are reasons why I know I will, I, will, I will do what I do or not do what I don't do. Um, and I need to live according to my own conviction. So I think this is the beginning. And actually now on the other side um, of, of my own little counseling sessions and um, time to process and shift gears. People don't know this, but um, I've actually been kicked out of a bank. Um, and the bank refuses to explain why they've kicked me out. So what does Nick Vujicic do? By the grace of God, we're gonna start our own bank. Um, I have seen grocery stores naked of food. And I told my wife um, 14 months ago um, that I will do everything in our power to not depend on grocery stores. Um, I think um, there's going to be a reverse in culture. I actually believe that there will be some people that um, will not go into the blockchain currency that will actually go back to Amish culture and exchange chickens and eggs and service and labor and tradesmen. I think that that needs to come back to that reality. I know this sounds very extreme, uh, but I'm, you know, I, that's exactly where I'm at. I'm going into farming. I'm starting our own bank. Um, and we will not try to depend on the big techs. Uh, we will do everything we can to be self-sufficient. And so it's not to be a fear, uh, but it's wise. It's, it's discerning the times um, and, and being okay with that. Money comes and goes. This is the second time I lost my company. Second time. And, you know, there are ups and downs and I've learned lessons through it all. Um, now I get to fulfill my dream of reaching people through the internet and I don't have to travel. Um, I want to be at home. I want to be, you know, I got a boat you know, and I'm on the boat yesterday and I'm with my family at the ranch. And so that's kind of what's helped me through this crisis is understand that there are some things in crisis that we realize that we would not have other, otherwise realized. Things that we were doing just because we were doing it. Things that we never started just because we were too busy and things that we were ignoring just because we were in rhythm. With this disruption, this is the greatest time to do some self-discovery, investing in your marriage and investing in your family. So many of my friends went through divorce just because they now had to face their spouse and their hidden secrets. If you have any hidden secrets from your spouse, get it out now. Go through counseling. Um, your family is everything. Um, it's not okay to just culturally accept what everyone else is doing. That in itself is bullying your spouse, bullying your own family. If your own family don't know what honor and respect and generosity is, then how will we ever make our nation understand what that is? So it all begins with us. We are world changers by what we say, by what we do, by what we don't say, by what we don't do. And so we must become resilient in entrepreneurship and be okay to reset be okay to let some dreams go because entrepreneur out there, your dream doesn't define your value as a human being. Wow. Muchas gracias, Nick. En verdad que es muy inspirador todas tus palabras y me siento muy, muy contento y quería pedirte algo adicional. Es, es un poco eh, difícil. Bueno, entendemos mucho lo que es la esperanza, pero es un reto eh, saber cómo encontrar el propósito. ¿Cómo podemos, eh, o qué nos sugieres encontrar, o cómo podemos ver ese propósito como tú lo has visto? 
Wonderful question. Look, for me, no matter how long you live, you eventually die. So my greatest purpose thread of hope is what happens after death. And I believe that Jesus died for me. He rose again. So I go to heaven. It's him who I pray to. And I know I'm not Catholic, but I love what Mother Teresa has done and said in her life as one of the greatest role models of humanitarianism that the world will ever see with what she had, and what she did with what she had. Um, and so it's been an incredible journey of discovering what we all can do to make the world a better place. Me and my wife, we sponsored 10 children. We're starting two orphanages. The first one will be in Mexico. The second one will be in Serbia, uh, which is where my parents were born. And um, we are very, very thankful that, you know, each and every one of us have time, treasure or talent to give. And it's, it's giving that really helps you to understand what your purpose is. Whether it's visiting elderly, um, being with an orphan, um, helping a foster family continue to foster, um, you know, doing what you can, whether it's time, treasure or talent to be a part of it. Um, I'm in charge of an international expansion of a startup company called Uncommon Giving. I'm the chief generosity officer where we are developing an army of people and a momentum and a movement like the world's never seen of a digital wallet that gives. Uh, we're all about now giving back. Even the bank that we're starting will give 50% of net profits away or it'll be a forgiving bank. And so everything that Nick Vujicic is doing now moving forward, uh, will be giving money away and encouraging other people uh, to also do the same. And so um it, we're very excited about the startup we're very excited about how big it's going to be uh, but really it's just you finding in your own community who can you help who can you clothe who can you help who can you let them know that they're not alone uh even with many of your friends being depressed or suicidal you got to pick up the phone and see how you how they're doing you might be saving a life um and i and i think it's important I think it's really important to know how, how much you can really do in your greater purpose and just find out how you can give. And uh, when you are in that mode of giving, you realize really quickly that it's better to receive than, sorry, better to give than to receive. And uh, that's definitely a law of life for sure. Oh, muchísimas gracias, Nick. Eh, bueno, para, para cerrar esto, eh, me gustaría que puedas regalarnos un mensaje para las mujeres, ¿no? Acá nosotros en nuestra comunidad tenemos casi el 80% son mujeres, eh, bueno, que han pasado momentos difíciles, pero que tienen una fuerza interior grande. Pero nos gustaría que les puedas dar a ellas un, un mensaje, ¿no? Un mensaje para seguir dándole ese, esa fuerza interna que tiene para salir adelante con su familia. I think it's being true to yourself, taking one day at a time, doing your best and trusting God in the rest and getting inspired by other women maybe that have gone through difficulties that have proven their success and their truth to themselves. And I think it's being aware of your surroundings and choosing your battles wisely and doing what you can um, to, to reach whatever goals you can, but do everything you do in love and in respect, but love. Gracias, Nick. Eh, bueno, ya estamos a puertas del evento que tenemos organizado para el 21 y 22 de mayo. Sé que tienes algo preparado para nosotros. Nos gustaría que nos puedas contar al menos un poquito de lo que tienes para el 21 de mayo, este, Nick. Yeah, I'll be talking about how to deal with your emotions, how to have an attitude of gratitude, uh, how to change obstacles into opportunities. Mm -hmm. Um, the importance and how to reset your goals. And then the, the, the last pillar is going to be the power of pace and perspective um, with time management, prioritization, um, and the perspective of, of your whole life and, and, and even your perception of time itself. Wow. Muchísimas gracias, Nick, por todas tus, tus palabras. Ha sido genial compartir contigo estos minutos. Eh, bueno, espero que nos podamos conocer pronto, ¿no? Y obviamente personalmente, 
¿no? para poder seguir aportando y, y ayudándote también en la misión que tienes, porque de alguna manera el hecho de estar conectados, te, te ayudamos a conectarte con otras personas también, ¿no? para que esa misión siga creciendo. Y también nosotros, ¿no? yo tengo mi esposa, eh, mis hijos, son, son mellizos, ¿no? eh, tienen año o cinco meses mis hijos. <ríe> Ahí está su foto de detrás. <ríe> Entonces, bueno, podemos hacer cosas muy grandes y te agradezco enormemente este tiempo. Gracias por existir, gracias por estar al servicio, gracias por sensibilizar esta, este corazón, ¿no? Y no solamente, me imagino, el mío, de todas las personas que te van a ir escuchando poco a poco. Gracias por ese momento especial, este Nick. No, yo solamente quiero... Love you, God bless you, and thank you for your time and the opportunity, and felicidades por todo, and we'll see you soon. Nos gracias. vemos pronto, Alexis. Muchas gracias por esta entrevista, que Dios te bendiga. Igualmente, muchas gracias, Nick. Saludos en casa, éxitos. Bravo, gracias. Los amo. Love you, thank you, bye bye. Bueno amigos, hemos estado hace unos instantes con Nick Boyajic. Ha sido una experiencia muy poderosa. En verdad siento que mis manos están, o sea, se me ha bajado un poco la presión de la emoción y sobre todo de todo lo que nos ha dicho. ¿no? Yo creo que ha sido un espacio de generar conciencia en todo aspecto, de entender cómo funcionan la, las cosas y sobre todo de cómo debemos nosotros vibrar con ese amor, ese cariño, ese afecto, ese reconocimiento hacia nuestra familia, lograr comunicarnos, como él dice, ¿no? si tú te sientes solo, si sientes que las cosas no van, llama a alguien, conversa con alguien, comunícate con alguien y eso puede hacer un cambio tremendo en tu vida. Eh, ha, grado, ha dejado grandes mensajes de valor y yo le agradezco enormemente a Nick y amigos, les digo, este video que hemos tenido ahora o esta, esta entrevista, repítanla todas las veces necesarias porque creo que no solamente en una palabra vas a encontrar lo que buscas, ¿no? sino que siempre vas a aprender cosas nuevas a través de toda esta experiencia que hemos vivido con Nick. Gracias por estar con nosotros y nos estamos viendo el 21 y 22 de mayo en nuestro evento Mastermind. Audio Jungle.